Welcome to Cursed, a bi-weekly podcast that investigates the liminal spaces, from everyday witchcraft to the haunted and the phantasmic. Hang out with us as we explore our personal experiences with the unknown and celebrate our craft. And now, episode six. Rites of Chthonia. What she said. People enjoyed the first one. Um, about That's what the word on the street is. About mm-hmm. mother. Yes. Um, and your snowsuit. And um, <laughs> yes. so this one we want to talk about um, some of her days. Mm-hmm. There's one coming up when this comes out the next day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys are going to have to listen to this real quick and then figure out what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be here doing a bunch of things and yes. posting pictures. Yes. <laughs> Embarrassing ourselves. Speak for yourself. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I will be embarrassing myself as well. It's Cricket who's going to keep it straight laced. I try. She's I mean, got some. There's no got promises. To, she's, she hasn't abandoned the answer yet. got to rein it in. I guess. <laughs> um, so, let's see. We know November 16th. Um, yes. We were just talking before we started this. August 11th. Good job. Is her other date, which is related to storms and the harvest. Yes. Um, and please, can we survive the winter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's all about <clears throat> okay so we're in the first harvest season and you know we've brought the first crops in let's hope this is an indicator of crops and abundance to come let's hope we live through winter hello it's like they have you know an indicator of how you know by august how well the seeds you have sown and and propagated have done through the year Mm -hmm. and by september october november are you going to reap what you soaked yeah what you soaked and (laughs) and what you laid into motion the legwork you did are you going to receive so anciently speaking that was the time where the offerings began. Of course, there's situational offerings, like mm-hmm. different geographic locations, whether it's inside your home or elsewhere, where she would be observed. But calendarily speaking, um, August 11th is the oldest of the dates that we have. Then there's Samhain proper, mm-hmm. um, where the end of the previous year is marked. The summer is officially over. And we enter into that six weeks of barren time which is her it's also that liminal time absolutely absolutely things are supposed to stand still until like what is emolk is what day february 1st i I know Mm. it rages in well it so the fallow time the barren time that's the dormancy and the quiet and the assessment and evaluation of where you're at both materially and physically resources that are tangible resources that are mental because going into the dark of the year with a compromised set of selves mm. you're gonna <laughs> know <laughs> yeah pretty quickly um how you will do surviving oh, that yeah yes yeah, yeah, scr- right. like <laughs> yeah no this is there's literally nothing you can do yes yeah. right so between august 11th and there's Samhain, obviously um, marking the beginning of the the quiet time, the dark of the year, and then there's November sixteenth, which is a more recent date, a modern date. Um, but I feel like it's still. I mean, listen, I would celebrate Hecate thirteen months of the year, mm-hmm. but to have a date of hers in August, September, October, November. Right. I mean, I'm cool with all of that. Which we know, like, I mean, you've got. Um... The dipnons at the end of every yeah. month. Mm-hmm. Um, I have never done it religiously. Mm-hmm. I do observe those mm-hmm. at times. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, up until maybe three, 
two, three years ago, mm-hmm. I never really did much on November. Mm-hmm. But I've got to be honest, there was a turn. It was usually Samhain. Yes. That was like my shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then any dark moon. Yep. Now, when I started out as a little baby witch, yeah. I was like, you want to give the moon, year? You want to give the year on that? Honest, full moon. <laughs> uh, well, um, we all went through that, story. right? And so I'm like, full yeah. moon. But then it's like, okay, uh, the dark moon is when her magic, yeah. Is. And um, same thing with Ava. It's like the dark moon is her yeah. shit. Yeah, there's yeah. a dark moon in Scorpio coming up. Yep, that's mm-hmm. her shit. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows what she's gonna do? Um, but like, so. Up until recently, I've never celebrated or observed the November 16th. The mid-November. But then it just, like, it was so powerful. And then we had the Hecatasia last year, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about. Yeah. And then what we got And planned. the Hecatasia a few years before, too. Yes. Yeah. But still, it just wasn't... Solon was my thing. Right. To mm-hmm. observe her. And then it's like... Right. I think I grew, and especially reading Keeping Her Keys and mm-hmm. Cindy Brandon's blog. Um, I know we're whoring her out, but... She is one of the best. We're whoring ourselves out. That's yes. Let's be clear. (laughs) I'm going to raise my left hand (laughs) and say I am all about prostituting for Hecate. And Cindy Brannon is our pimp in a lot of ways. Um, She's one of our best modern resources for working with. Well, it's about platform and visibility, Mm -hmm. and she's out there. I read her article. You both, which I will find the article. I'm sure she's got multiple ones, but. I will find the article because I read it and it completely changed yes. the entire way I viewed that night. Yes. And I thought mm-hmm. there was that little bit of a, what the fuck have you been doing? And then it was <laughs> another, like, I feel like I gained this special, like, insight into, like, I could connect with this. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I did. And it's like, that's the observation day that I like, focus more on just for her. Right. So when she's a big part. But Solwyn um, is, you know, ancestors, it's um, all of that stuff. But right. like, uh, and even in August, it's like, I still don't have that, I don't feel that connection. Right. But November, I do. And I think it's that mm-hmm. feeling because this is her dark time. Everybody's dark time. Right. This is her underworld focus, um, mm-hmm. the dead focus, all that fun stuff. Right. So it's like, okay, whatever happened harvest good or not this right. is your fucking in it yes your balls deep in it now well and and again and two things i want to say <clears throat> one is that and didn't you find that in listening to cindy brannon and us coming together for hecatesia didn't it drive home the point that your devotion to her is so much more well-rounded and comprehensive yes when you're going, well, I mean, when you look at her through the vantage point of another mm-hmm. devotee, it informs and refines your knowing of her. And that's with mm-hmm. a capital K. Yeah. And it is because I am a perspective junkie mm-hmm. that I wanted to start offering, you know, public ceremony for Hecateans to come together, not so much that we could inventory our commonalities and similarities of worship, but show me the the edge of the difference that she gives to you mm-hmm. as a mother of all skills. I mean, mm-hmm. she gives you a certain type of parenting and leadership. She gives you a different parenting and leadership. She mm-hmm. gives me a different parenting and leadership. And I think that rounds out the understanding of her. And it's, she is so much more than just this, you know, goddess that would, that Zeus allowed to stay in the game. <laughs> right. Well, That's she so wrote fucking... the damn game, first yeah. of all. Well, and I know, I think it was either in that Cindy's article or there was another one, but when you talk about, you have those people who are like, I don't observe modern days because they don't right. mean anything. They don't have that. But I don't relevance. Think, but I don't think it matters because right. when you talk about Hecate, she's very fluid. She's very relevant to all the times that she's been yes. um, worshipped. And just because a date is modernized or right. doesn't have that doesn't mean that it's not become something now. Mm-hmm. Because as a collective, Hecateans recognize it. Right. And mm-hmm. isn't that worth doing just because it's not ancient, quotation marks, right. as some might say. Right. I mean, you're gathering pieces of history 
that you know and you can and you try to observe that but things manifest and things happen and to ignore that just because these are modern more modern days right. um to ignore it you're i think you're missing out on what you could work with yes um, in those aspects and yes. when we all started working with hecate i think i don't think i knew from me, my my point of view I didn't realize how many layers and faces yes. and changes. Yes. Like we talked about the Brimo aspect. Yes. When you feel that, that's fucking It's strong. Strong. And yeah. it sets you back on yeah. your heels and you're like, oh. The Sotera, the motherly, you yeah. can feel all those and then you the feel- Atalos, the Enodia, I mean mm-hmm. Kaluchos, I mean she's got in excess of, you know, a thousand fucking names. I'm certain of it. But these are all edges of her that change from situation to situation, but also from worshiper to worshiper to worshiper. Right. And if you don't observe November, it doesn't mean you're any less of a Hecatean. But I think she pulls you to what you want, what she wants for you, Mm -hmm. what you feel connected with. And that will change. There might come a day where I might realize Mm -hmm. I feel closer to her at the August time. Mm -hmm. It's seasonal. It's personal. It changes. Well, and I think that... The purpose of this pod is to give noobs a way to hold and have um, her diversity because keeping the keys, as Cindy says and knows as a practitioner, it's about keeping all ways in which you can know her. Mm-hmm. Like this is... The yeah. high school janitor's key ring. Yeah, man. Like, that I mean, that whole big like, ass ring yeah, like this, yeah, and you've right. got like a stack. And sometimes of people. you're like, oh shit, that's what this opens? And you're like, cool. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. But August 11th and the mid August observations are important for a historical understanding of survival mm-hmm. and what her worship afforded them as participants. Mm-hmm. It's a Thank you, please not die. You know, I mean, we're like, we're grateful. Yeah, so August 11th is focused on her relationship to human survival. Mm -hmm. November 16th is the day to honor her for her. Yes. And I think that binary relationship that, you know, just as a child understands its parent and nurturing influences child also needs to recognize that after your ass is in bed at 9 p.m., mama's out and living her own life. (laughs) And I think that it's important for us Mm -hmm. as worshipers to see her for her story Mm -hmm. and not her for her uses to us. And that requires a humility and a willingness to put dates into our schedules that calendars that build in the types of worship we should be at least proficient in. Like yes. the one seems like a petition. Right. Mm-hmm. And the other is an observation and a reverence. Yes. yes. Um, and by the way, that's Hadera. That's ha- hi. Sorry. Um, and you know <laughs> Cricket and me. And um, I was like, oh shit. And the cats. We should probably. And the cats. They, the cats. they might There's hear cats. some Tori's here. Hi, Tori. Um, so with that idea that you just said about like the observation i went from like there's times where it's just i'm i'm probably observing and thanking Mm -hmm. for what Mm -hmm. i've received and the guidance and Mm -hmm. more than i'm asking um and i think yeah you fall into that i know i have always been iffy about asking yeah for a lot because that's the abrahamic thing that's like Jesus, Santa. Yes, position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Petitions of and I And I don't, mi- I don't mind asking, but I don't want to come off like every little thing. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like I'm asking for something. And it feels irreverent and disrespectful yes. to ask for right. something because you're trying to make her beingness about you. So it's like, so like yeah. with Samhain, it's, not, it's yeah. like, on Samhain, it's like we leave our offerings and we observe ancestors, local spirits, whatever, um, where we've come where we want to go in the next year. Yeah. Uh, and then also any divination spell work we want to do. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. November 16th is like a holy day. Yes. Like mm-hmm. this is all about you. Yes. I am not asking for anything. Right. Yeah. Um, I am thanking for everything that's gotten me to this point. I think we're asking what can we offer you yeah. on that yeah. day? Like 
Yeah. What flowers can we lay Mm -hmm. on the steps of your temple? What incense can we burn in your name? What invocations can we craft and read aloud? And what tears can we offer you Mm -hmm. over, you know, the evaluation of our lives up until this moment? It's a gratitude for standing in her majesty. Yes. Like I'm getting goosebumps just even when I talk about her, like there's standing puddles in my eyes. Yes. You know, like the hair on my arms is sticking up and, you know, I'm flashing high beams. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just how that happens. <laughs> I think I mean, in modern paganism, I think that there's this almost want to use the gods as correspondences. Hello. And I'm really, I, I think it's so disrespectful as yeah. someone who, you know, is exploring these yeah. deep, meaningful relationships and crafting them. They're not bike messengers them. like exactly. in New York City. Yeah. If you want that, you know, maybe reach out to a local spirit. But even that takes a form of respect. Agreed. You know, and uh, I, I think that there's this reverence that is lost. Right. Um, I would prefer that you not use any deities at all rather than to just call on someone for something frivolous. Right. And only for that one thing. Right. You know? And it's like, have yeah, you I asked want, what you can do for those deities I want before this, you come with them? And I want why. But I've always looked at it as you don't, it's not one-sided. Why would they ever fucking want to do anything for you? That's spirits. That's, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I, I approach it like I do with my familiar. Mm-hmm. I've never been like, what can you do for me? It's, Correct. It's yeah. a working relationship yeah. and it's a mutual relationship. Yeah. And I yeah. do things for her. She does things for me. And mm-hmm. to expect it to be one-sided Mm-hmm. is very self-centered, very mm-hmm. religious, mm-hmm. Abrahamic bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, I don't think that Hecate chose to work with me and to do work for her. Agreed. Only because she's like, oh, he wants things. I'll give him things. It's like, I will help you along the path, but I have a reason yes. that you're doing things for me because I know you can get them done. Yes. And I think that's a devotee of any goddess yes. or mm-hmm. god or deity. Agreed. Um, down to like, if you're an animist and you're working with the plants, like you respect those mm-hmm. allies energy yes. because they will, it will backfire. You can't keep going, right. mm-hmm. pushing against things. It will happen. Right. And yeah. I always view it as like, there's so many things, be it small, big, that if you're building up that, for lack of a better term, karmic debt, something's going to, when that crack opens up, there is going to be a lot that's like, oh, I, here's my chance to, to I was slighted by them, et cetera, right. et cetera. Mm-hmm. But once you have uh, things that work in your benefit, like we talked about probably in episode two and actually all of them, when you have yeah. spirits on your side, right. deities, ancestors, familiars, yes. you are at better harmony. Sure. And so the... The worst thing you could do is not recognize that. Yes. Like Cricket says, she picks up, which we I think we all do, but she goes and picks up trash. Mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. just sometimes you don't go to ask for anything. No. You just yeah. do. Yes. It's yeah. a service. And because I, everything it, sees that. Yes. Yeah. For me, you know, I don't <clears throat> have as much monetarily that I can sacrifice. Right. So there are other things that I can sacrifice, like my time. Right. Or, you know, things of that nature, acts of service that I can do in order to connect and to serve mm-hmm. and to serve their purpose Mm -hmm. you know there's other things that are it's not always about you know i have to go buy flowers i have to go buy this and i do those things when i have you know the resources to right but it's not always available and i think Mm -hmm. that uh there's such a a culture of you know i have to have the shiniest prettiest altar and i have to have the shiniest Mm -hmm. prettiest spell ingredients and you know everything is all about you know i need this i need this i need this and really uh, you know, I keep going back to that episode of Sabrina where she has, you know, twine and sticks in the yes. woods and she is working yes. the magic. Yes. And, you know, it takes yeah. nothing. You are the power. You are exactly. the divine. You know? You're that Ouija board. You're yeah. the spell. Yes. Yeah. You're, the, but you're the dagger, the torch. How many the times key. have yes. I left as an offering of just whatever we made for dinner? Yes. It's not, mm-hmm. I don't, you know, if I don't have the honey or the pomegranate, I'm not like, well, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will leave if we made hamburger helper, which we don't eat meat, but if we made whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> like if we made whatever, I'm just going to leave it. And I yeah. think it's the intent and the act unless, I mean, obviously we get a satisfaction out of like making it pretty, mm-hmm. whatever you can use, even if it's just some honey, just put yeah. it in a well, little saucer. And, you and I re- mean, like the, oh, sorry. Um, even, you know, you leaving out, you know, whatever it is that you made for dinner, you know, 
that's that ties all back into the dumb suppers and things like that. Where yes. people would leave that outside for, you know, the marginalized, the you know, the, the people yeah. Yes. The dogs right. that were roaming the streets, you know. And like, that's why she's tied to hounds as well, too, mm-hmm. because I mean, you talk about and you weren't supposed to look back, but Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> Don't but, look back. But the, I think the people too. It's like that's why in modern times we mentioned in one of the episodes um, donating to homeless shelter, mm-hmm. um, donating the, animal yes. uh, to animal shelters. Those who are on the road, right? Yeah. Because that's what when people left offerings at a crossroads, mm-hmm. Hecate didn't come and eat them. Like, oh, this is my fit. Oh man, you left this. This is delicious. You left her your act of service. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. but. It right. was the people that were marginalized yeah. or the animals Who or whatever. Who can benefit from it. That benefited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why when you go out to your altar, when I leave stuff, or Tori leaves stuff, the gods didn't take it. Correct. But right. the raccoon did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Or the, or the cat. But you just let whatever wants it, take it. Because you've left it and it's become... Well, and it also doesn't hurt to, you know, strategically place said... Lamb roast mm-hmm. covered with roses. <laughs> I do, yeah. Um, yeah. Right outside Cat and Pizza. And whatever uh, <clears throat> herbs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I'm sure she means mugwort. Yeah. Right. And But like the, like the little thing, like sometimes, like last year, you made, and it's in the picture, and I fucking loved it. I think we all did. Her little... Yeah. Yes! Her little... Oh the dog! With the strophalos. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And... You made it, and it's like, do you have to make one of those at the end of every month? Or if, no, but no. at that moment, you felt this is. What that's I exactly offer. what I do. Yes, and um, that's good enough. And if it yeah. is a can of tuna, and you have stray cats, and you feel like I'm going to leave this at the end of my driveway, yes, for mm-hmm. Hecate, yes, and feed the cats, like it's the exact same thing. Yes, as roasting that lamb, yeah, as leaving the roses and all this stuff in front of a Catholic pizza place. Can you imagine <laughs> the joy in the dog's heart who came upon? <laughs> this fucking lamb roast oh my God. that the we had consecrated life. and wept over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure, the dog is crying too. Like, <laughs> I don't know what this was. The dog's probably like, is this, is this a trick? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> right. What is this? I like this crossroads thing. Uh, yeah. I know the police were a little concerned. Cur- yes. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, we, so we, the police did get We facilitated summoned. their changing it, yeah. as well. And I love it that. because I, um, on the way home from the ritual, I actually got pulled over because oh, um, the person <laughs> who was driving me, because I was not feeling well, um, and I knew I wouldn't because I was so drained after mm-hmm. all of that. I oh was my just God, like, is this that person that's not on the show? <laughs> he is not on the show. Um, I like that. But he, uh, he was driving and he did a U-turn where he wasn't supposed to do a U-turn. He didn't know about it. God damn it. Um, and they, <laughs> so they pulled him over and, uh, they asked him, you know, where are you coming from? And I said, oh, you know, I'm coming from, uh, Laughing Brook down there. And they said, oh, the place with the raw meat? <laughs> it was. Yes. yes. <laughs> we traffic in raw lamb meat. Yep. And our uh, candles and, yeah. you know. Wine. All kinds Which I of. I posted a picture of you chugging out of the wine bottle. And I don't know there. what you're talking about. <laughs> that was not That me. was not <laughs> If you follow us on Instagram. <laughs> you can see the see photos it. of what it right. didn't happen. Oh, Lord. I was so, I was laughing so hard. She I, means the dark Lord. It was blurry. It was so blurry. <laughs> but it's the greatest picture because you just got Hedera chugging it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what better way to in- introduce people to the person they just heard for two hours? This <laughs> <laughs> picture. <laughs> Snapshot of reality. Right. Hedera But is the ones correct. who know you are like, yep, that's yeah, her. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. her. Yeah. If yeah. she's not right. putting something in her mouth, it's right. definitely coming out. It'd be out. weird if you- <laughs> That's a little That's very forward. Apt. Yeah, no. yeah, I mean, it feels In right. one side, out the I'm other. I'm about it. Well, or in and out the same. No. <laughs> no. Just, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um, um, so, the, the, so what about, like, how I'm thinking of who's listening to this mm-hmm. and rights of Cathonia and... More people than... Yeah. I think it's important that you talk about how you moved... Um, from this like Samhain only regimen mm-hmm. into a fuller pursuit of like connecting with her. Like, have you adopted other ways of being since, you know, we've come together as practitioners with different edges or 
I mean, what has stayed the same and what has well, like I become said, more refined? When I started, it was, it's a full moon. It's witchy. Triple goddess. Oh my God. Like, let me. You know, like, I, oh, sorry, but, I'm interrupting. Like, because I never got the full moon thing. Because it's a full moon, like, last night. And yeah. It makes me so anxious. It does me And too. crazy okay, and itchy. Yeah. And... Like, we literally just talked about this last yeah, night because nice. Tori did a thing on the. She's a Taurus, and it was yeah, a full moon in Taurus. Good and... night, Irene. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, and not only that, but um, she's have her. She's having her own, like, yeah. new experience in relationship with her goddess, the Morrigan. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and. So, for her, she's like, oh, and you could say, too, like, that full moon felt different. It did. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just, it's like what you think you're supposed to do, but then it's like the more you dive in, it's like the dark moon um, was, like, Hecate's. Mm-hmm. And well, I think the dark moon's like a dark truth. goddess. It's a dark goddess. Yeah, yeah, we will dark. have a dark goddess episode, for sure, mm-hmm. um, where we talk about all these and why they're relevant today, why we need them today. Mm-hmm. I know we... Mm-hmm. Mentioned, touched on it with Hecate, but it's not just her. Right, um, right. We're at a time in this country, in this world, yes. where the dark goddess is like... R- she reigns. Yeah. Right. We um, need her in all of her different Her time is now. Yeah. yeah. You know, not just the reflection of worth mm-hmm. to those who gaze upon her, and I think, but her worth intrinsically, mm-hmm. and I think who she s- is. I mean, you see it more, obviously, for us, we're biased. We have a lens that we what look through. What do you mean? Because, <laughs> but... Um, but like, okay, let's say when you think about, because I'm 85 when I was born. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you think about the New Age movement and that's how, gross. I thought we agreed that we would never. <laughs> we yeah, let's talk don't about talk about that. But anymore. what I mean is, skipping like, ahead, the idea was okay. Well, we're going to focus on love and light and all this. But mm-hmm. I think the the realization where we are now, and then the reality of it, it's like that's why people are turning to Hecate, the Morgan, um, Lilith. And it's not just, you know, it's not new, but I think in mass, that's why more people are interested in these darker ones. Because they realize, like, they're being shown something. Let's, but I know where you're going with this, and let's just call it what the fuck it is. Um, (laughs) This is the shortcomings of being fed by media imagery. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, newbies to any worship or to any tradition even they go out because they want resources 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 Mm -hmm. they don't know who three hands press is they don't know who scarlet empress imprint is they don't know who you know troy books is Uh so you know they go to the regurgitated and like puff piece Mm -hmm. that says full moon should be this um they don't even mention new moons mm-hmm. in terms of worshiping a new moon every month. Yeah. And, you know, the opposite of a blue moon being the dark moon, the black moon. Mm-hmm. And they don't know what these things are. So the misgivings and shortcomings I see is the first line Google education yes. of the new of the seeker. So being a seeker in 2019 mm-hmm. is not the, the version of me that was ripping the back page out of Azure Green Catalog. Oh my God. And yeah. <laughs> filling in a catalog form to get yeah. myself a bullion or mm-hmm. whatever the hell I was getting. I mean, so we should always be criticizing, you know, what the quality of offerings are to the noobs that are out there seeking this stuff. And they're told that it's full moon, you did this, and Samhain, you do this. They don't know about August 11th. They don't know about November 16th. Mm-hmm. They don't know that her origin is not Greek. Mm-hmm. She's Mediterranean, yes. She is Fertile Crescent, yes. But Legina, which rhymes with fun time, of the, you know, fun times of, yeah. but is, is a history that not many bother to scratch away the surface coating of the force-fed Greek mythos mm-hmm. that's very Hellenically and Olympian heavy. Mm-hmm. It favors this later story. And then there's no initiative for the noobs to push further and dig further and look into 
what were her offerings mm-hmm. at her temple? Like, how did her people honor her at Crossroads? And why? And what were her other names at different mm-hmm. spots in the, inter- in the Mediterranean coastline? And where it, it doesn't serve the curiosity, the, the sacredness of a seeker's curiosity to know more. It's almost pacifying. Mm-hmm. They're dosed with this media bullshit mm-hmm. from Google and they don't go past it, which is what I hope is happening right. with this podcast that they're like, that's definitely a goal of ours. Yeah. But, yeah. But granted yeah. too, it's never been easier to be misinformed, but it's also never Agreed. been easier to inform yourself. In, in, yeah. And so I the think, difference is initiative. Yeah. It's what you're called. And I think if you're really pulled into those depths, Mm -hmm. you explore it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that comes from not just with us, with Hecate, but also like I just mentioned with Tori, with the Morgan, you can see things, but yet there's stuff you explore that's not surface level that you're not going to find. Right. I I mean, you you have to do the work at the end of the day. You you have to do the work. No one can do it for you. Well, but isn't the attitude bring all sources and resources mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. It's a very American hubris that says, mm-hmm. I want my deity on a platter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you want that, go do some Tammy Faye Baker and <laughs> Jimmy Swagger <laughs> research. Cause then you'll get your little spoon doses of bullshit. Right. Mm-hmm. But her worship requires mm-hmm. digging and historical mm-hmm. understanding and knowing what the hell the Eleusinian myths are. What are the mm-hmm. mysteries? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she is the progenitrix of the mysteries, at least in my opinion. Right. Well, and like you, when you had asked about um, what made me come to that, not only that article that I read, but the place I was mentally and emotionally, yeah. which I'm still on the cusp of and trying to come out of, was a depression. And right. It's never more, I mean, we, we talk about, oh, this and that, and this year, about, but every year, this is a rough time, especially mm-hmm. um, if you deal with depression your entire life, or right, if you've yeah. dealt with any kind of trauma, anything. Yeah. But this is the shadow time, and this is why it's yeah. hard. Mm-hmm. And it's it's beautiful, it's our time of year, but yet it's not without its struggles. And mm-hmm. I think that night is a reprieve from like the yes. energetic suck yeah. of yeah. Samhain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because who wakes up the next day and doesn't feel drained for two oh, weeks? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 And this is almost like the, I'm melted. I like I'm raw. I'm just yours. Yeah. yeah. Um, take it. Like, yeah. It's all I have, but apparently it's worth something to yeah. you. And I think it's worth more. Yeah. Um, she wants to see what's left of you. Mm-hmm. Right. When all of that is poured out. Right. And, and she think, also asks you to look at mm-hmm. what that is. Yeah. Yeah. And you're the corpse of what's left. And are you going to make it through the season? Sexy cadaver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Is what I'm going for. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's like that raw feeling of like, I'm drained. Mm-hmm. I'm just. Yeah. And it, it, but you're just, you're left there with like, that's, that's it. And I'm going to make it through this. And. I mean, it's just punch after punch of... But it's almost like, you know, back when, you know, I didn't have as many severe health conditions and I was able to exercise, it's like working a muscle. Yeah. And every time you feel exhausted, especially the first few times you do it, and this is our really, really big push before the marathon. Yeah. You know, and this is when we're trying to get in our best shape and do the most and... Every year, I feel that I'm a little bit stronger and I can deal a little bit better. And that's when she turns me completely upside down and shows me something completely new. (laughs) She's like, you thought you knew. Here's this dagger. I'm going to cut you open. Yeah. Good luck. And you're like, oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. But isn't it brilliant then that when we are all all poured out Mm -hmm. and sexy cadavers Mm -hmm. of our earlier selves, we are the most vulnerable in terms of you know the the way we see ourselves you know we could be very critical i didn't do enough mm-hmm. in the previous x many months of the year that mm-hmm. happened yeah. um is what i've offered sufficient and worthy i mean a whole bunch of personal worthiness questions come up Reflection, all that and the point stuff. at least 
for me, of her example, as she's, you know, our sovereign role model, is to acquaint ourselves with who that is mm-hmm. when we're not human doing, we're human being. Mm-hmm. Because the Whoa. hardest work <laughs> that worshipers can do requires no hands on. Mm-hmm. And that's scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you realize that the offering you make to her is not a tangible. It is not a a beautiful, sweet smelling incense. Of course that is beautiful. And it's it's you know, those offerings are expressions of love. Mm-hmm. But in the middle of November, she knows that what you're coming with is the quality offering of yourself. Yeah. And there's it pierces like you said, yeah. the knife, and then I'm reminded of saw when Tori said she felt like the blood eagle. Yeah, that's yeah. what it feels like. You're completely flayed, flayed open. wide open. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to bring it to like what you talked about, Hecatasia, and we mentioned the last one. Mm-hmm. It's all in that same vein of we're molting, we're shedding skin, yes. and when is a critter more vulnerable yes. than mm-hmm. f- right after it's molted? Right. And you are trying to explore that yes. with what's happened, what you want to go forward, the here and now. And yes. it's it's so liminal. And I think that's why it's so easy to disassociate this time of year, especially for me. <laughs> yeah. Like you feel ungrounded. Depersonalized. Uh-huh. You feel yeah. ungrounded, but you also feel buried. Like mm-hmm. But it's the it's the the quintessence of you is what stands before her. Yes. In mm-hmm. November. Right. In August and October, you know, the August, September, um, the harvesting season of the year, what you're stripping away is circumstantial and tangible. What stands before her in November lacks flesh and bone. It is literally the part of you that has your story attached. It is the part of you that will move forward in perpetuity with her. Mm -hmm. So she asks, I feel that you have to work all year on the quality of that quintessence because that's what you're offering to her in November. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know what yeah. you're saying. I know. Picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah. And it's one of those things that it's, you know, I think you uh, speak it well. It's one of those things that's hard to communicate and express. Yeah. You feel it. I think we all feel it. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think what um, I meant to mention, too, when you said noobs, but also these practitioners, because we immediately got responses across Instagram yes. messages yes. of people mm-hmm. saying, you just validated me. Yes. Yeah. I'm brand new. And yes. I feel like I got a lot of good information. I'm validated. People that have been practicing, it's like, you guys are giving or sharing my story with me. Yes. And it's like, yeah. that's what we wanted. Yes. And what we mentioned in the first yeah. two hours. Yeah. And, um, it, like I said, it just... You think, okay, well, we, we do this podcast. Everybody has right. certain focuses on, like, what they like to hear about. And we thought, oh, this episode. But I think it it, it transcends just mm-hmm. Hecateans. Mm-hmm. Um, it really, like, it's just the experience of hearing other witches yes. mm-hmm. and other pagans speak, regardless of what deity they're talking about or they devote themselves to. It's that commonality as well. The value, I think, and this is more my feedback for the two of you and mm-hmm. my absolute love for the Please two put this of you. On iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Five no. stars. No. <laughs> um but be aware though that old hats mm-hmm. are being reached who've been practicing their way and in their habits and in their rituals who see you both mm-hmm. as an infusion, a refresher. Mm-hmm. It's recertification in the school of Hecate mm-hmm. that you all are, you give each other um, a new resource. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so the brilliance, and I think the point of this podcast is how can you use these scheduled dates on the calendar to more fully explore what it is you're feeling, you're hearing, you're wanting to do. So you're giving them not just like a, a a listening resource, but you're encouraging people to find each other, to refresh their perspective with other worshipers Mm -hmm. of Hecate. And I think 
that's a big deal because when I sit with you and you tell me about your experience, I think about mom in a different light to see the way you experience her. I learn from your perspective and experience, but I also get to see my own mother Mm -hmm. caretaking and leading someone that I love Mm -hmm. into a fuller expression of who she is. Yeah. But you two need to understand and never underestimate what this does Mm -hmm. for your people. Oh yeah. It's a big fucking deal. When, and I I want to squeeze your fucking faces. (laughs) Like zits. Yeah. And I think when we identify as witches, when we identify as, you know, LGBT, when we identify as anything sure. that is other. Our queerness. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is it, it is so important for us to have people who stand up and, yeah. and say, look, I am doing this thing. Yeah. You're not alone. Yeah. Because I know that when I first started, I had like the little people who introduced me to it, who, you know, fell out of it because we were, you know, teenagers preteens, you know, and for me, this was so much more. So I was practicing for alone for a very long time. Long time. And, you know, I felt even when I was going into metaphysical shops, I wasn't getting the fullest expression yeah. of wow. who I was because it was very, you know, Azure Green. It's boxed. Well in books. You right. Know, and this, I was looking and just desperate starving for yes. something. Oh, there's a yes. book about angels. Oh, there's a Buddha statue. Gross, yeah. not in my shop. <laughs> <laughs> no. We can go somewhere else. Um, <laughs> but I mean, didn't you, didn't, and, and let's believe and let's populate our brain space with images of listeners everywhere hearing this and realizing, let's organize a thing Yeah. on November 16th. Yeah. yeah. I like that too because. But give like yourself credit in. for that. Are you giving mm-hmm. yourselves credit for that? This it's, is a big fucking. It's something deal. that yeah. you gave to us because we thought, like you said in the last one, don't. All right, I'm listening. <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> I'm letting but, it in. <laughs> um, drink your Gatorade. I'm um, drinking my Gatorade. <laughs> hydrate. Uh, so, Can but we. <laughs> <laughs> right here. You got it. <laughs> I'm, I'm all jacked up on albuterol. Yeah. <laughs> Not um, sleeping for three days. But yeah, so I think, like you said in the last episode, nobody just covens up. Right. It's very rare. Right. And we we saw a message, and um, I forget what platform it was on, that said, I've been solitary my entire life. Um, I think it was our Google review. Whoever left that, like, let us know, because it was a really sweet one. I know we joked about how yeah. it started with, oh, this isn't any riveting information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I found my people. Yeah. And it's like... That's, That's so important. We're not trying to. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It's, it's that relatability. We're not poaching members. No. What we're right. doing is we're setting a precedent that your obligation has to be to yourself and your magic. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that isn't this what she demands of us? Yeah. That we polish up that quintessence that we hope when it's we stand before her that she's elated and joyful and pleased and proud. Cause we were going to get bikes and like ride around to people's houses. And ask yeah. Them. Trick or treat. <laughs> we talked about Hecate. Yeah. Have you heard about, um, yeah. And, uh, but this is somehow easier. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, but yeah, that's what we felt compelled to do from the beginning because we know how much it means to have that village. Yes. And like I said, I think, even in the beginning when we had the Hecatasia mm-hmm. and it felt good to connect, I didn't realize for me that that date, that was important, but that date didn't signify. It was like, mm-hmm. I'll leave a little offering because that's mm-hmm. her night and I don't connect with it. But then it's yeah. like, that was changed for me. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that that says anything you about my devotion. for us. Yes. But. That's not fair. <laughs> you did. And because I'm, I'm sure I, I very much, it worse. I, I, I'm knowing exactly what he's saying because I, I felt the same thing where, you know, I would leave something out. I would do a little something, but it was not as, as full as what I was doing on the, on the dark moons and things like that. I didn't have the connection. Did to we it. ever not cry last year? It, 
We cry shit every year. Um, but, <laughs> fucking um, every year we cry. <laughs> but being able to come together with other people who understand her and know her and yeah. know her. Yeah. As someone who, you know, practiced solitary for a long time, just yeah. like you practiced pretty much solitary for a long time, just like you did for a long mm-hmm. time. Just with... Yeah, just being able to come together and share experience and say, oh my god, this fucking sound can you believe how yeah. fucking shitty this feels yes yes like but it's 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 a shoring up of our own experiences mm-hmm. of her and our love and devotion to her yeah but, but it recharges but, like last year we absolutely me. it's yeah. feeding it's um, it's necessary yeah. but like what we talked about as well was like the um what tool are you? Are you like at this moment? Mm-hmm. And what could you be? It changes. Uh, you're talking the year. about the the vows and the oaths. We have the keys. Yes. And the, um, but we we did all that, and it was like a group. And it's it's even something you don't have to be a devotee of Hecate, right? To get right that yeah. connection out. It's it's right. It's just it's a really nice experience, and so um, that's what we wanted to do with these episodes. Not only tell you about our experiences with her, yeah, not the Google one hundred and one uh, correspondences. <laughs> But also, like, what it means to us and how maybe that you out there can approach the day with more than just, I read this on Google, it's got to be an important day. Like, right. you feel Go it. dig it up. Right. Go give that to yourself. Put resources on your path other than, you know, someone else's printed, you know, digested understanding of it. Like, mm-hmm. go dig up primary sources. Go, you know... Um, track down the archaeological relevance of yeah. her temple right. and sit pilgrimage, you know, pilgrimage, um, get yourself a ticket on an mm. airplane and make something like that your goal. I mean, I wouldn't recommend going to Turkey at this not particular right now. time. Not Which right literally, now. Uh, Tori's like, you know what we need to do is we need to take pilgrimage every year. And yes. Like, yeah. We want to go, I mean, we went to Ireland and I don't think you ever, like... Like you said, and I mentioned in the last one, you had felt led at least as a kind of a, a pointer. Of, yeah. Oh, Hecate, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. point. But then it's like, we went to mm-hmm. Ireland and it's like, you had felt this tug from the Morgan. And it's like, to be there felt surreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we want to go to Iceland. We want to go to mm-hmm. yes. um, Greece. Yeah. Yes. yes. Hopefully to Turkey one day because that's like... How about we Hopefully. stand on a Greek island and look over <laughs> at Turkey? Turkey. Yeah. And like kind of what they're I mentioned Turkey. too is yeah. when you talk about the Greek, and I think they're called like, are they called like um, Hecateons? What were the little statues that people put by their doors? Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about, the Lares, the, the, but they're the Greek version And it was Lares. like a house, whether they yes. worshipped her or not, yes. would have one because it was her guarding that entry and, yes. mm-hmm. and doorway in that space. And, and then that's why you found her in other temples yes. to other deities. Because yeah. it's mm-hmm. like, well, she's, she's guarding she's, this. Yes, she's, yeah. um, she presides over. And then her, she's not controlling it. She is the gateway yeah. to the And then her the temple new in Legina... Was also, didn't they find that there was also an altar space for another smaller, like, little section? I don't, I don't. Re- I'd have to relook yeah, at it. Yeah, pull it up and let and me see. And it was either it. to, like. Was it recently? It, it could have been Artemis. I don't know. I mean, it's been a while since I've. Yeah, been, there's but, a lot of conflation. Yeah. But, about like, you don't. Worship. And, like, that's one of the things I remember reading. It's like, you see all these temples to these Greek gods. Hecate did not have that temple presence like this is the temple of the but what she did have was she was in everybody's house yes she's in everybody she had temple. distribution right <laughs> and it's like but so it's like i think she was approached differently and maybe that's because she was absorbed in or at least welcomed in or, well she was already present right. yeah, or she was there first yeah, yeah, yeah. She but was what present i mean is in, like they just it was you they couldn't say you guys can't we're gonna call this somebody else right this is a different name now yeah right. this was Okay, well, she's got to be alongside, and it's mm-hmm. her. She's not as present in all of the hymns and the writings that some of the other ones are, because it was almost just she's like she's implied. Yes, it is known the, she, that she is there. There are suggestions that she is there, right? But in terms of the listener understanding that going through printed material through a mass 
producer. Um, <laughs> that's only one vehicle to use to arrive at Hecate. Travel is another one. Archaeology is another one. Um, anthropologically speaking, I mean, the fact that, you know, Hecate starts at, you know, the coastline of Turkey and that Fertile Crescent area. But when she moves westward through the Mediterranean, her name is Hecate Mm -hmm. in North Africa, in Egypt. And she was at that point the mother goddess. She was in she was who you prayed to. And frogs. During yes, frogs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which are very liminal critters. They are very liminal and they're environmentally ambiguous. And not only do they're they they're transitioning. Not only can they change from aquatic not change plant. I mean they can change sexes. Right. They can hibernate. They can go dormant. But they're, they're an indicator they're in an yes. indicator species. Yes, to, that too. To tell the health of a community. And they don't get enough credit as being one of I frogs. love frogs. I have yes. one on my left thigh. But say all this to say <laughs> that she's she presides over gateways of change, whether that's a physical change, a spiritual change, an educational change, a self-esteem change. She's there. That's her providence, her scope of, you know, jurisdiction. Uh Spiritual jurisdiction. I just made a thing. Bam. In your (laughs) face. Did it. So did (laughs) I. But so there's other ways to arrive at her. And I think the best work we could do for the noob is to explode the walls off of how they think they should approach this Mm -hmm. don't let a book tell you just approach it yes just approach it any way you can we were trying to get across too is it's great to do all these read research we all do it and Mm -hmm. but there's nothing like because we're junkies right but there's more things to be had like how i started with this shit was like just going out and just what you feel, your instinct, and to do, yes. and just speak. Yes. And yeah. she will respond, and she will guide you, and you'll learn all these things, whether or not it contradicts a book, or yeah. your own personal, uh, it, it just, that personal experience will guide it. And that's any yeah. deity. Um, there's, th- there's, there's a purpose there's to all of the agreed. connected things. Yes, but... Um, nothing like your personal gnosis is going to like. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say is that every, everyone's experience of her can only have two points of origin outside you and within you. Mm -hmm. So the research of her from within is called gnosis. Uh The research of her by taking in external sources is called academia Mm -hmm. or travel. So you can research it and study it. You can also get your ass on a plane and go visit other places. And that can even be in the largest city in your state, for example. You don't have to book a ticket to China. I mean, we should. Can we talk about yeah. near us there's a tr- train station in Statesville? Yes. There's a mural of Hecate. It's not the train road. station. Yeah, it's the um, not the, it's, it's the, at the um, town hall. Town, yeah. 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 But like... In Statesville. It's, yeah. It, and I mean, they say like, oh, it's not like I'm a devote, but I wanted to represent. What I mean. <laughs> and, it, and it blew these people's minds because they're like, yes. do you know there's like a Greek goddess of witchcraft painted in the hat? And it's like. You know nothing about her. Right. That's such mm-hmm. a small understanding. And I think I thought yeah. train station because I think it, she he's painted a crossroads. It's, she's at the crossroads. Right. Yeah. And Statesville and is yeah. called the crossroads of America. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But like. <laughs> Like, you might be surprised at where she is. Yes. And the shit that she shows up yes. as. And you're like, holy fuck. I mean, we could talk about the Statue of Liberty. There's I mean, that. You know? Yeah, let's yeah. talk about the, the transition torch. from being a resident of one country to being the resident of another the country. Spires. Hello. Um, Her bright and shining parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, um, and you've got the torch. And I mean, it's like, oh, it's Colombia, but it's also like, it's not Colombia. It's Lady Libertas and who mm-hmm. speaks freedom. This is where I start soapboxing <laughs> as opposed to my beatboxing. But I mean, this is where she shows her true scope of services. I mean, she is this transitional goddess, whether it's physical movement, spiritual movement, or anything amongst that. I mean, mm-hmm. she's 
painted on murals in the least expected places. Yes. She's made out of copper and stands 100 feet tall. I don't know how tall. But at the same rate, movie. it's like with the, the current that we're in and the fact that we all are talking about dark mm-hmm. goddesses and stuff and the bullshit that's happening mm-hmm. um, on every level, but also with immigration, it's like you're mm-hmm. like going against... Yes. This fucking head bitch that stands and says, I welcome you yes! through these yeah. gates. You don't like, get to countermand gonna, right. her. Yeah. Sir. Okay, that's cute. You have a Bible and all. Yeah, that's like, that's sweet. Yeah. But guess what? But the, the real nation, shit's coming. Yes, the real shit <laughs> is here. Right. Because we're transitioning from this. I mean, even if you think about it societally and culturally, we're transitioning from a place of staid indifference. Right. right of of let's be real being pacified and thinking everything's okay well no it's not right. so we have this chaotic chapter in in global and current events but this is where her work is done in this chaos it's not comfortable this it's was, not user friendly been ignoring the cancer yeah and now it's you're gonna get schooled in the cancer t- and it's not majority Correct. but it's time to fucking cut it out yeah yeah and because you cannot a- be passive you cannot be silent you we've been shown harsh realities that we all knew that yeah. to do nothing is to side with the oppressor yes yes and and she demands 100 percent right. participation in the fucking change. move or get out of the way move <laughs> get out of the way never mind right but <laughs> with all that being said because i mean we that's like obviously Something we're very passionate about. And so boxers. Feel like, right. And <laughs> like, I mean, like I said, the activism is a call from yes. the dark goddess. Yes, yes. it is. Um, the warrior. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, just like, and it doesn't even mean that if you can't, like, you you will know what you can do and feel comfortable offering. Yes. But for those who feel like being an escort for Planned Parenthood, for mm-hmm. marching, yes. for... Being that activist, it's like, fucking, you know what you're doing, who's behind you, Yes, and the service you're doing it for. And still be aware that while you may be enjoying the the consequence of change, of refinement, of, you know, evolution, spiritually speaking, you are giving her the highest quality gift that she could ever deserve. She wants to know that we're doing something about it and we are growing ourselves from the previous version of us to the new improved version of us. And I have to believe that cosmically speaking, she's out there, you know, clapping her hands with joy that she gets to bear witness and facilitate the changes that she requires. Our participation is, I mean, mean, even if it's just like donating anonymously to, um, Planned Parenthood or anything yeah. like that, you don't have to be with a megaphone. There's people who will, yeah, mm-hmm. but you can still be that. And like, we don't want to make anybody feel like, but yeah, the indifference, yeah, we've been shown that that's not a state to be anymore. No, it's no. you pick your side and you can't be in the middle. And for the longest right. time, that's where the comfort is. Yeah. And mm-hmm. dark goddesses are not about comfort. Yeah. No. no. Well, and you would be working with somebody completely different. But if they come knocking on your door, it's because you're getting out, you're getting pulled out of your little box and right. bubble. And mm-hmm. it's like, I need you to fucking do something. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it can be loud. It can be public. Correct. It can be behind the scenes. Right. But mm-hmm. it's still the same intent and the same like vein there. Exactly. Um, and like when you think of, and because Tori's here too, and we, mention the morgan like there's no i don't have the uh insight or the research done that she has but like that battle that warrior like Mm -hmm. it's just you take up arms and you defend defend yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's core value magic yes yes whereas hecate is are you actively seeking and resourcing the updating of you are you Pursuing, doggedly chasing down the things that your soul needs to be fed and grow and change and evolve. And I think that I I can completely see the conversation between these goddesses that there is this evolution of becoming 
And through this constant evolution of becoming, you refine what actually is your core value. Mm -hmm. And are you willing to defend it and make sacrifices of yourself to push and perpetuate the ideal that you serve? I absolutely love and would love to be a fly on the wall (laughs) to hear that conversation Mm -hmm. between these two divine beings and understand that for humanity and the little snippets that we are, can understand because our minds are small. Um, what is, what are our core values? What changes are we willing to embrace? And every act of letting go and releasing the past liberates us to embrace what could be. And that is exceptionally magical and you know, sacrifices don't count for shit if they're low quality. Mm-hmm. You don't put a battery-operated tea light on a hecatane altar. You go get a real damn candle. <laughs> and you give her the highest quality of the the thing that you want to offer. Blood. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know? Right. Lead for me. You because don't give her the burger from McDonald's. You give her the burger you went out and hand-formed in, grilled with onions and whatever else. I mean, that's right. what she deserves. And it's not, I don't think we want listeners to, you know, come away with this going, gosh, is what I offered her not enough? enough? Not enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not this. This is give her the raw, the real, the, the most, the honesty and the, mm-hmm. yes, yes. All if of you that. feel like, oh man, I really want to um, bake one of her little like cakes or honey right, cakes right. or I want to do that. And maybe you can't, then that's different. But if mm-hmm. you can and you feel mm-hmm. led to, and to just go like buy one, yeah, it's, I wouldn't say it's bad, but like trust yourself and mm-hmm. what your instinct is saying, like feels mm-hmm. right. Cause like, you know, some people might not be able to cook or not have this or that. So it, it doesn't have to be like cricket said expensive. It doesn't have to be, High end. It doesn't have to be pretty. Mm-hmm. It just has to be you, mm-hmm. and it has to be genuine. Yep. And that's yep. literally all that she fucking wants. That's yep. exactly right. And it can be pretty, and it can be all this for yourself and to yep. feel. But at the end of the day, that's not going to matter. Right. It's mm-hmm. going to be what's at the core that yes, like pierces right through. It's not the the robes you're wearing. It's not the candles. It's or not the, sky the things. Clad, the trinkets. Although it's fucking cold. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's fucking cold. I mean, you know, it's baller. There won't be any uh, Strofalo's pasties. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, maybe, maybe, maybe in August. Yeah, in August. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the sacrifices of the comfort. So of course, you've got to right. get mm. the most uncomfortable pasties ever, and then stand out in like twenty degree weather. <laughs> yeah, true. But that brings us to back to August, Samhain, and November dates. That you move away from the tangible, which is appropriate for, you know, earlier in the year, we're about the tangible and the material. And then towards yes. the darker point of the year, we're about the intangible, the non-corporeal, the spiritual gifts we can offer. Right. And I think that that is, that's how the calendar can be of profound value mm-hmm. to worshipers to use these dates and understand them in historical context. And it will lend over time with vigilance different levels of knowing Mm -hmm. and a rounding out of our worship. Yeah, and it's not just in our hemisphere where we have the season change because there's obviously the others, but Mm -hmm. the principles are universal and the reasoning is universal. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right. You get to this point and the tangible isn't there. It's not what matters. And that's why we talk about this is like the thin veil, which yeah. mm-hmm. we always argue that the veil is always thin, but like it's more palpable, <laughs> I guess. Yes. You can feel and it. it's that, yeah, yeah that there are seasonal then, indicators, there are emotional indicators, um, there's light it's indicators. Like mm. Divination, that's mm-hmm. not tangible depending on what you're using. Right. I mean, it's a medium, but right. it is that time of year and it's that feeling, and that's the transition. Mm-hmm. That's where she resides. Mm-hmm. So it only makes sense that. Whether it's modern or not, the right. date is important. And I think it's a good, like, refresher and a good, like, offering of mm-hmm. yourself in a, in a mm-hmm. perfect time to do ritual in mm-hmm. that, like, reverence mindset. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just not the time where you feel like you're asking. Um, 
anything. And even like, you know, being, I mean, it just, you're in that already Mm -hmm. starting at the change of Mm -hmm. of that harvest. Mm -hmm. Um, But it only gets more raw and real. (laughs) Yeah. And when you're less able to, you know, pull together a coherent thought or pull together a material thing to, to make offering. I mean, we're, as the year wanes on, we become more bereft of resor- emotional resources, psychological resources. So isn't it brilliant then to come together as Hecatans on November 16th to hold each other up? I mean, it's, it's when we can't mm-hmm. hold ourselves up. And so it is easier sure. work when we come to each other and lay the pieces of ourselves um, in the trust and care and keeping of other Hecateans and our mother. How much with that picture of the altar from last year, like so many people had so many pieces and parts of them yes. laid out. Especially compared to the first year that we did this. Yes. So there was just this <laughs> little table. It was adorable. <laughs> right. And, and there were was... some good, important things on there. But yeah, it's Absolutely like... true. But the need right. is so large, mm-hmm. which was one of the profound... Um, underestimations I made <laughs> opening the shop because you know it you don't realize how much we need each other until you give yourself to the others yeah. and I mean that with a capital O and a lowercase O because mm-hmm. when you come together you feel fortified yeah you feel fed you feel renewed and you have a new vantage point to research I mean you have all these amazing experiences, you know, as you're leaving the hecatesia of 2019, you're going, okay. 2K19. Yeah, 2K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2K. But um, you're able to take a new direction when the last place you want to look is your, at your own shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And yes. I mean, it's, it's, I just think, a pagan lifestyle and a Hecatean lifestyle requires examination and initiative. Mm-hmm. It requires an appreciation of what is already and a joyful anticipation yeah. and, and innovation even. Yeah. There's to... no sleeping through service here. No, man. No, <laughs> no man. She requires no, 100% no putting, participation. You know, uh, your Apple uh, uh, AirPods yeah, in like... and listening to the game. Yeah. None of that shit. No. There's an offering plate, but it ain't your money. <laughs> no, exactly. It's like, oh, let me just get this yes. black mess that yeah. is considered, I guess, a soul. Yeah. And just, yeah. just put it on the plate. It's refurbished. Yeah. Um, Pass the plate. You know? Right. Yeah. And um, with all that being said, mm-hmm. um, we've got <laughs> Hecatasia 2K19 mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Um in a couple of days, but when you hear this, it'll be tomorrow. Yes. Oh, I suppose um, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, tell us uh, some shit. So I know you don't want to give out everything. You don't know. You me. don't want to put it all. In. <laughs> you don't know. Me. You don't know me. Anyway, you um, just wait. Yeah, it's, you won't see all the business. Um, so, a couple years ago, um, I felt as though. There were deficiencies um, in my life and there were proficiencies in my life. And I felt as though I really needed to examine um, my relationship to Hecate because of the huge response um, to the shop and the creation of bonds that were happening in front of me every day and every class and every ritual, the need for us to have access to each other um, was so huge. And I realized that in supplying a meeting place for that to happen, yes, I was stewarding the job that I was given, the charge I was given by Hecate. And my understanding of that was that I was to create a place where that change, that liminalis, um, could be realized and could be safeguarded 
and populated with resources so that, cosmically speaking, I'm an enabler. <laughs> and I knew... Not just cosmically. Yeah, no, 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 all the enabling. Um, but I knew that I, my job was to create the place where people could come to undergo that change, that evolution of self, and but never to confuse myself with the sanctity of the charge I had been given, the mandate. No, mandate's not right. I'd have to think about what to call it, but I know that I have a purpose mm-hmm. and a history, so a pedigree and a purpose with Hecate. And I knew that what needed to be facilitated and enabled was access to each other and access to the things that we needed to become more us. Mm -hmm. So then I started looking at my own shit because I became aware (laughs) that I was so focused on providing transitional space for others that I had conveniently forgotten to really take hard looks at, am I changing? Mm-hmm. Am I growing? Mm-hmm. Am I doing as much for my own scholarship and devotion? Like, when did this mirror get here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I thought I was holding it this way. Right. Now I'm holding it this way. And oh, I didn't shit. authorize that. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. You did not authorize that. That is someone else, Sarah. Take a look. Yep. Nope. It's mom. And yep. so I realized that meaningful pillars and cores of value and meaning were coalescing in front of me and things that I had previously believed to be important were exposed Mm -hmm. as ridiculous and not where I needed to be putting my time and truly love and coming together does so on its own. And to, in some aspects, so does getting rid of the shite out of your life mm. that doesn't serve, that is destructive, or that preserves a destruction. Mm-hmm. And identifying those things, I was like, the shop, our village, our love affair, that is both community, but it's also an expression of me. And have I truly paid attention to that? And so when this cascade of events in my life began two years ago with the exacerbation of health issues, um, with the dissolution of a marriage I found to be fraudulent, um, with then in this past February, um, the building that encased the shop was burned without burning the shop. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, all signs point to yes. <laughs> Do you see why, you know, where the things that you, that aren't important can fall away and the things that are important can take precedent and assume a position of priority. So I realized that in the mix of service, I had lost commitment to myself. And I was having a conversation with another, um, I gotta say, elder in the community. It's gross. I'm only 48. But Um, hey, at the time, elders used to be like in their 30s because you didn't live long. Oh, so that just makes me so (laughs) much more older. We call it experienced. Um, (laughs) But I, I was speaking with another elder in the community, um, who I feel like I can be present with my own shit with. And I said, I, I need, I need change. I, I know that I'm supposed to live out this tower card and I know I'm supposed to cut the tape there and slide it behind me and just let it be there so I can reassemble what's really me and Mm -hmm. what is what are the things I want to answer to and be? This is one of those things. Where it's like, how many tower cards are in this deck? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. like, I, I just feel like yes. Yeah. Oh my God. But I yeah. understood that this was all deemed necessary mm-hmm. by Hecate. It was what was required. I had to be stripped 
of false structures Mm -hmm. in order to see what my life really revolved around. And it came down to two things, my magic and my family, my community, my village. Mm -hmm. It's a balance between a belonging and a purpose. And it's huge. When we feel as though we have a concrete, strong foundation of belonging, that we are safest and most confident to go out and find our purpose and live our uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I get it. Okay, I get it. I get it. She wants to see me stripped bare of the distractions. And so I realized in talking to this other elder, I said, I want to shave my head. And he said, no, 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 no. You can't do that. And this is a particular Gofi type. And I geef you to his Gofi um, in the Viking community, heathen community. Um, and he said, because... I mean, think of the historical significance of shaving your head. I said, I know what the historical significance is. He said, but you're not an adulterer. And I said, aren't I? And he said, what do you mean by that? He said, who have you proven unfaithful to? And I said, myself. I put myself behind my service to others. And that's not elegant. It's not divine. It's not, there's no martyring in the worship, worship of Hecate. And I knew that I had cheated on me. Mm -hmm. I had not been faithful to who I was and I needed to wear that signifier I take responsibility for the people and circumstances and things I put into my life that were not aiding and abetting the fullest expression of me. I did that. I did that. And I needed to let go of this rejecting and blind obedience, um, the rejection of myself in favor of the blind obedience to service, that's not noble. It's not honorable. It's not heroic. And what I owe my people, what I owe my family, what I owe Hecate is the fullest expression of me. And if I want to live and sing and dance in my magic, I need to be about that. Mm -hmm. And I need to handle it with a dagger torch and key. I need to be those things. And I realized I was no longer interested in the constructs of fealty, the human failures of institutions of marriage and, you know, designated roles of moms and what does nurturing look like. And I said, that's, I'm going to marry me. And I know that whether it's August 11th, October 31st, or November 16th, that she wants me to pursue my magic. And I want to give her the most beautiful iteration of me that I can. That was literally the whole theme of last episode. Yes. Was to own it. Yes. Your mm-hmm. sovereignty and yes. to own your magic. Yes. Yeah. And that she's the happiest when you're yes. exploring yourself. Yeah. Because then you're not just a gift to her. You're a gift to you and to everyone that sees you role modeling how to put you first. Yep. And isn't that what paganism is? What Hecateans are about? They honor the self as divine and instruments of love and influence. And I'm all about that noise. Mm -hmm. So I realized I needed to participate fully in this house clearing. Very traumatic. 
in so many ways. Mm -hmm. But I have been forced to divorce all that shit and take myself up as my purpose. Yeah. Because then you guys are getting USRDA, top quality, <laughs> a Dara Bindwood. Whoa. So, no right. <laughs> so, in the fact that, you know, as a child, I have always um, seen the moon as the tangible physical face of Hecate, one of them. And that even as a small child, that constancy and faithfulness and bright and shining light. I mean, she is all of that. She is a role model of how to be radiant and how to be dark mm -hmm. and how to find power in both. Yes. And so on the 16th, on Saturday, I will be marrying the moon. Letting it stand as the exemplar of my magic and my acceptance that I am important. I am a priority and the development of my magic needs to be the thing to which I am wedded. And in so doing, I'm creating the most beautiful offering I can mm -hmm. to a deity that has changed and facilitated my change and asked me, demanded me to be more me. Yeah. And that she requires the me that is feeling inspired and fed and loved and loving and so on Saturday it is literally one of the hardest things to do though is to focus yeah. that inward. And yeah. It's scary. But that's what the November 16th date is all about. It's yeah. you know, am I am I putting something in front of her that is extraordinary and beautiful and I'm beginning to believe that I am. Yes. <laughs> Says the kitty. <laughs> Says Stuart Kitty. Um, by the way, tears are sacred and so are the Kleenexes that you use. Yes. <laughs> because those belong on the altar. But I mean it's it's quite often that I cry on behalf of Hegate, but um, well, don't we all though? I would hope so. <laughs> I would fucking hope so. I mean, everything feels so watery with her. It's like this plasma of change and love and stuff um fluids are gonna come out fluids will be <laughs> coming out they but they are sanctified and holy because they are wept or nose blowed into a tissue on behalf of a real visceral emotional process it's a it's a big deal and i'm 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 in the stage of writing the ritual and writing my vows and I'm letting things surface and bubble up, and I'm really fucking excited about what the final product is <laughs> on Saturday. Um, and yes, there will be like before and after photos. Um, yeah, so you can see because I'm taking my vows to my magic and myself and to Hecate, and I'm offering myself fully to her worship. Which, in a lot of aspects, is self worship. Right. Yes. yes. And the preservation of others being valued and worshiping themselves. And I think that, like, when you keep saying it's like a almost a tenet of paganism. Yes. It's the search of divine within. Yes. It's not how to become worthy of a divine. Exactly. It's yeah. That self worth and self divinity mm -hmm. that you accept and grow and focus on is what makes you worthy mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you become equal to the divinity. Yes. It's the whole as above, so below. Right. Yeah. And, and then she's beautiful and she's looking at you. You know, I'm, we're standing in the, in the face of mom. Grinch is 30 feet up, <laughs> <laughs> but she's proudest in those moments. Yeah. I mean, I feel like when you become 
the dagger, when you become the torch of you, when you become the key to your own insight and others' doorways of change, isn't she the most pleased? Yeah. And this is a deity I know I can make proud. Mm -hmm. My parents, not so much. But, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? I've got goals. Right. And I think they're absolutely attainable. And And I think that's similar to Cricket's story of how she said when she struggled, it was like, I fill those holes. I am you. You're me. I am that spark at the center of the strophalos of the labyrinth. Yes. That flame. Yep. That's me. That's you. Yep. It's one and the same, and it's great to serve others, but like you said, at what point are you doing the disservice to everyone Yes, yep. without the service to yourself? Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's going to wane and yep. wax. Like, yep. But the constant pursuit of it is what matters. Yes. Uh, because you're never going to be content. You're never going to be... Yes. I mean, you, you know, you'll find contentment, but... When you think you've done it all and known it all and fixed it all, yep. then you're just fooling yourself. Yes, yeah. because you, what you've done is busied yourself with the distractions right. of the world. And because it'll just come the again. inward work <laughs> right. is really like said, hard. That next heel, it's like, oh, I thought I was at the bottom. It's just nope, the it's just the beginning. Oh, God, this one's a lot bigger. <laughs> I'm just really so tired like, of looking in this mirror right now. Right. Yeah, it's like, can I look at something else, please? Yeah. I mean, and then it becomes a hall of mirrors. Yes. 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 There's a lot of- oh. yes. <laughs> These are like funhouse mirrors, and I don't like, you know, I need right. to. Anyway, but so that's. And and certainly I don't, this is what I need to do for me. And it's what I would love to infect others with is, are you doing for yourself what you need to do? Because that's how you pay homage to her. The role model. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you do the hard work and you do the scary work and you have the conversations that are hard to have, she is most pleased because you're not turning away. You're turning in. Yeah. And if we move through the world, triggering that process in other people, we can safely say with confidence that we are doing her work. It's you like, it's that you become your black hole, your underworld. Like, yes. The implosion. Yes. Um, the constant I supernova you, of me. There's more, <laughs> yeah. There's more internal mysteries. Yes. That you're not looking because correct. We're all very guilty of looking outward for yes things. Mm-hmm. Whether yes. Whether it's like others or Bigfoot. Yes. You know mm-hmm. whatever. I'm just going to externalize for a while. But then when you yeah <laughs> when you look internally you're like oh god this is deep yeah, yeah. this is very deep <laughs> yes yeah. um, but it's 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 I mean you kind of it in order to reassert some type of stability and structure in your life I mean you take inventory of all the shit that you're cutting away and but then that requires okay what's left standing I'm standing. And I'm stoked about polishing that up and keeping my focus on, am I answering my becoming? You're hardening your shell. Yes. Your skin. Yes. To be shed again down the road. Yeah. Am I chasing my muchness? But when you change that skin, you want to be stronger. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. um, At the end. So that's. Yeah. And I'm just excited about what I will be offering her on Saturday Mm -hmm. because what I'm offering her is the stripped down, unadulterated true facts version of me. And And even like peripheral, like we're going to be doing that as well. Yes. Just in the whole ceremony of it. Yeah. The whole ritual of it. Like this is something that is not just coming together for you and supporting you, but it's a, you're looking in the mirror, but the, uh, backside is also the mirror we're looking in yeah um and so we're very excited about it yeah. uh, <laughs> because it's still it's, sure. it's still geeked um devotion and reverence for her fanboy fangirl yes yeah. all of the love so now um like you said mentioned last time i know we did like an invocation at the yeah. end but you wanted to read your um 
rites that are the invocation yes, that we always use that you do on her night yeah. and that what we're going to do then so that when you listen to this you can have your night along with us or along yes. with your people mm-hmm. or along with you yeah because because i again, will be reciting all of this there was i kind of mentioned it in passing because somebody had said they'd been solitary for so long and blah yeah. blah, blah and this had helped um and i kind of said something and then like after i said it i was like holy fuck did i say that like, we are a yes. coven for the solitary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so if you're listening to this and you're by yourself, like, you don't have to feel like, damn, I'm going to miss this year because there's not a group. Or, damn, I wish I would have heard this earlier. I could have formed a group. Like, the group right. can be you. Yes. And your other selves. Yes. Your demons, your ancestors. Agreed. And Hecate. Yeah. So um, join us, won't you? Yes. <laughs> In the and, invocation? Yes. Okay. Everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> Hecate, most honored one, most distant, Thracian goddess of the moon, the dark hours, the underworld, maiden, matron, crone, the first witch, queen of spirits, snake goddess, liberator of souls, enchantress, guardian of the dead and dying, the seeking and lost, daughter of night, Daughter of stars, brilliant in power and knowing, bringer of change, deliverer from ignorance and slavery, ageless goddess free of time, faceless goddess free of form, timeless goddess free of beginning or end, wandering goddess free of boundaries and other false constructs, accompanied by her eternal hounds, Carrier of the two torches of wisdom and epiphany. Holder of the dagger used to flay illusion from falsity, from truth. Bearer of the sacred keys to the gates and doors between. Fear and power, confusion and revelation, dormancy and becoming. On this night, in a place between places, at a time between days, in the presence of your awesome grace, your incontestable sovereignty and fierce beauty, we, your assembled children, honor you and your providence in our lives. Let us see your stealth and ferocity as hundreds of knowledge and magic. Show us the secrets of transformation, the dark spells of the dead and dying, the steps to be taken on our descent into pure knowing, beautiful, fearsome great mother, midwife to our rebirth as witches, our rebirth as priests and priestesses of your path, daughters and sons of your temple. Lead us, we implore you, in the pursuit of your beloved arts, your dark magic, your prophecy and divination, your incantations and will-working, your consecration of tool and talisman, your leadership of rites and ceremonies, for we humbly seek to serve in your most sacred work of transition and change. I, Hedera Bindwood, your daughter in name and deed, conscious of you in every act of service, in every thought of love, in every moment of magic and will, do so in your name. Mother of witches, guardian of the crossroads, in the dark of your moon and in the reverence of your name, let my sisters and brothers and their tools of your service be consecrated and made sacred. Hail Hecate Chthonia, hail Hecate Trivia, hail Hecate Entia, hell Hecate. Hail Hecate. See, that got us last year, too. No. It gets you. <laughs> Every, Every year. It's so beautiful, though. It is. Thank you. We adore it. And I know I, uh, you sent us the transcript of it. I will do it again. <laughs> uh, I will do it again. I knew I was going to cry. This is perfect, though. It's good. More Gatorade. 
<laughs> I mean, if you're going to cry, <laughs> you have to hydrate. Um, it's professional grade crying. We do appreciate you guys. And um, mm. thank you for listening to we us. We love for, you is actually yes. what he meant to say. <laughs> yes. he mis- That's he, what I mean. He mispronounced <laughs> love. It's hard for him to say. <laughs> Just <laughs> say it. That's I'm what he means. Virgo. Just, I am too, <laughs> you clown. <laughs> yeah, but it's the commitment. No. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, but... <laughs> no, it's two hours, and this was like, oh, we'll do an hour. But this is I knew it was bullshit like when you said it. You, you should have known it was going to be know, three hours of clown. I mean, we just go with what <laughs> mm-hmm. we need to say, and it has to be said for us to be able to sleep at night. So and, your um, disclaimer, <laughs> your legal disclaimer. Disclaimer is... It is um, our intention to have a one-hour show. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> In actuality, it's going to be five days. But what I want to do, what I want to ask um, from the listeners mm. is... If you do have or observe this night, whether you've done it for years, whether this is hearing this and you're compelled to do it. Yeah. Send us pictures if you want. I know some people don't like to share altar pictures, things like this. Sure. Send us the pictures. We want to post them. We'll yeah. post them in our stories. We'll post yeah. them on Instagram. We'll tag you or we won't tag you. We'll put you anonymous. Like we just want to see and have others see what we're talking about. Right. We're able to do in our group. And widespread, we want to do all that. So I think that would be great to see. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. um, have all month and the rest of the year to post True. whatever. Um, Another idea, too, also, is that um, they're going to listen to this on Friday, correct? Friday the 15th? We hope so. They will, right? At midnight. They will download it immediately. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, and if they, what we could agree to then at dusk on Saturday the 16th, that wherever we are, um, we will all read aloud the invocation yes yeah. at dusk that way wherever dusk is for you you are in the liminal and you're in the liminal mm-hmm. right. and even if you're listening to this after the fact or years from now any dusk will do right any dusk will do. you because know because it's you know it's her time right mm-hmm. um and that's when it starts yeah hecate's night um every night right <laughs> so, but yeah, Hecatee on Saturday. Yeah, this the first one was all about like Whew. us. This one's obviously about us too, but this is about like what you can do for like the rights. Yeah, and um, to get in it. And I'm so excited to hear more about like what people do and what they. I felt, do too, because um, mm-hmm. it helps flesh out our bones. <laughs> <laughs> and then crickets. <laughs> and then crickets. I love it. <laughs> All right. So we will see you guys like in another week with Brown Mountain Lights, a history. <laughs> okay. It's not, it's not a. I get it. I okay. get it. Never mind. And then a week after that, Brown Mountain Lights, a group discussion, which okay. was really fun to do. Um, so. Uh, I'm invited to that. Huh? To that process. Oh. I can go to that. It happened. It already happened. So the answer is yes. Yeah. Isn't yes. it? You can join the Cursed Coven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you'd like to join the Cursed Coven, um, go to our Patreon. Patreon.com. You, you don't have to pay to play. Yes. But like if you pay, we'll play. Yes. Yeah. And there's still going to be, you, you still have to do your. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My thing. <laughs> photos. Yes. Um, okay. Well, that'll be that'll be something else. Yes. We'll have to give. Like, oh, it'll be something uh, else. <laughs> for sure. All so. right, guys. Um, well, that's it for us, right? Mm-hmm. And we love you. And yeah. We, we love you. I said it. You did. You did. Good I feel. Job. See, you're growing. I'm proud so of you. Proud. Look at you. <laughs> you dug your heart. Kind of choke it down. Five sizes. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grinch. <laughs> oh. Okay. So bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Cursed is a bi-weekly podcast produced by Bones McWilliams and Cricket Word. The theme for Cursed is Voice of the Trees by Sun and Moon Dance. Check them out on Spotify, YouTube, or at sunandmoondance.bandcamp.com. Follow Cursed on Instagram, Twitter, and become a patron at patreon.com slash cursedcast. Yeah. Bye. 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 It's like a acapella. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>